I interviewed Theo and we talked about the, the last Soft Machine album. Yeah. And he was telling me that the fact that you changed names from Soft Machine Legacy to Soft Machine mm -hmm. and did this album that would coincide with the band's mm -hmm. anniversary and mm -hmm. stuff, there was more of a conscious decision perhaps to take in more of the legacy of the old Soft Machine, whereas uh, well, yes, previously you hadn't really worried about it. That's very interesting because when we started in 04, Elton Dean, myself, Hugh Hopper, John Marshall, there was n actually no feeling that that um, that we even needed to play stuff from the old repertoire because you've got such a strong base there of people associated with the band and um, I mean, right from the start, we did play some old material. We always did facelift, I think, and uh, but um, gradually, uh, and I think probably uh, when El when Theo uh, when Elton went and when Elton passed away, and uh, Theo took over, it began to be more of a conscious feeling of of uh, you know let's mix up consciously mix up uh, old stuff and new stuff. And, you know, the, the, the legacy thing was quite interesting, really, because it was huge, to a certain extent, myself and Marshall. Elton didn't want to call it Soft Machine straight off. Uh, Hugh was very um, you know, kind of ambivalent about it. He didn't want to upset Robert or something, or something like that. And I kind of went, went, went along with him, because I remember very early on, we were offered, a, we made that DVD in Paris, right, as a Soft Machine legacy. But there was an offer from Japan, a lot more money if we called it Soft Machine. And Elton said, yeah, let's call it Soft Machine. And I remember me and Hugh sort of going, well, Hugh particularly, and me also me going, well, something I, feel, something, something I feel about this not right. You know, Soft Machine Legacy is a good compromise because really it's soft, proper Soft Machine people, particularly you, Elton and Hugh, from the classic Soft Machine. And Marshall's been at 72 and me even. So, but then a lot of the promoters started just using the word soft machine anyway, forgetting about legacy. And then there was this thing about legacy as a tribute band. You play in these, there's a lot of venues in, in England, uh, with, you know, sort of three, four hundred seaters, where everything's a tribute band. And then there's you. And so everybody's going, oh, it's a, it's a tribute to soft machine or something. So, it was only two or three years ago we finally sort of officially decided to drop the legacy thing. Um, and it did make a difference actually. That was a decision. Uh, it did make a, well because it had to be a conscious group, group thing. And it did make a difference really in the sense of, um, you know, people were always going, well what's legacy? I remember the first time we went on the prog rock cruise and we did the question and answer and they go, well what's this legacy thing? Why isn't it? We are, well, we don't know, you know, we don't know, you know, because it's obviously in so many people, you know, and um, so, that's Soft Machine, which I think is fair enough, actually. And uh, I never had a problem back in the day, because I wanted to play with Marshall Babington, and that, and that was the Soft Machine I heard, and I, I hadn't taken a lot of, because I was only interested in guitar playing back then, Soft Machine didn't have a guitarist, so, I didn't take a lot of interest in them at the time. I mean, when I was at university, people had third, which was a, quite a big deal. You know, quite a lot of people got into that album. And uh, I had a, one of my very good friends at, at, um, at university had third and absolutely, you know, adored it, you know. And I listened to it, I thought, yeah, yeah, that's some interesting stuff. And of course they were on the proms, I saw that, because that was such a big deal, you know. And I kind of, I, I I kind of liked it, you know, but they didn't have a guitar, so I wasn't going to listen. <laughs> that what, wasn't the band that you, you would potentially ever join. No, 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 of course not. <laughs> Let course alone not. still be in it 50 years later. But I remember this guy who was a huge Soft Machine fan, and he got bundles, and and he played it to me, and he went, oh man, you know, this, this and, and um, he said, this latest Soft Machine, fantastic. and. You know, and then two weeks later, I phoned him up and said, guess what? He said, I don't know, what, man? He said, I said, I've joined the soft machine. Went, what? <laughs> you know, he was absolutely, what? What? 
And finally, as a second day, Peter Gabriel phoned me up. Really? And I said, sorry, mate, I've just joined the soft machine. And everybody went, really? Everybody I told you, they went, really? I thought, no, no question at all. I want to accompany Peter Gabriel when I can be lead guitarist with soft machine, you know. <laughs> Although I love Peter Gabriel, you know. Yeah. And, uh, but I don't think we'd have had much of an association because, you know, he wants, he's a song, singer-songwriter who wants to have control of his, he wouldn't like me blasting off, I don't think. <laughs> and at that time, I was determined to do that. <laughs> so, um, you know, so, so, uh, uh, can't remember where this question, <laughs> where this question starts. <laughs> Conscious decision. Oh, soft machine. Yeah. yeah about the, no, it's the been last great. Time. It's yeah. been great since we did. It was good, always good, but I mean, this really feels focused now. And the band's amazing. I mean, Marshall and Babbitt are incredible. Of course, Theo's a tremendous asset because he's, you know, because he's... But well, he's not 78. So exactly, he's not 78. <laughs> I wasn't going to say that, Rick. Really. <laughs> he's, you know, it's funny because I played with Caravan recently and they've got a guy, not in any way um, um, car personality-wise like Theo, but he's sort of mid-50s. And they're all sort of a bit, you know. <laughs> you mean the drummer? Yeah, Mark. Mark Walker, yeah. And he does all, when you do a rehearsal, he does all the organising and he says, come on guys, you know. We're gonna... He adds a lot of uh, useful uh, enthusiasm. Doesn't he? Which I guess you did when you joined Soft Machine, right? Because... Oh, in 1975, you, of course yeah, I did. you described them as a, as a morose bunch. Once. Well, they were, mor <laughs> they were morose, they were morose. I, I um, uh, yes, they were, in t it was pretty intimidating, you know, because Funny enough, when I went and played with Stefan Grappelli and everybody said, oh, good, you, you know, you're following Django Reinhardt. I said, well, A, I'm not following Django Reinhardt. And I've heard Stefan Grappelli play with a lot of fairly average guitar players. So although I'm in awe of Stefan Grappelli, I don't feel like it's going to be that hard to fill the chair, as it were. But with Soft Machine, of course, you know, it was Alan to follow and the fact that nobody spoke that was all doom and gloom and, um, you know, uh, and sort of, uh, you know, it was a bad atmosphere. But we made some great music uh, and made some great albums, but it wasn't a good atmosphere socially, you know. I mean, I like them all individually. And in fact, funnily enough, as the new member, uh, George Harrison said this about when Billy Preston came to play with the Beatles. As a new member, they all kind of came to me and moaned about it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what bands do, you know. <laughs> but yeah. particularly that one, it was like kind of, uh, it, it increased the kind of intimidation of it, really. Yeah. Uh, I, I remember the first rehearsals where, uh, you know, first of all, I'm kind of quite nervous and, you know, you were Alan Holes with some material, etc. And I'd play it and we'd do the whole rehearsal and at the end there'd be absolute silence. Everybody just staring at them. Like that. And I thought, oh, I must have, played really badly they must hate me you know they must think I'm awful and they're probably thinking why have we got him you know and it wasn't it was just that they, they, they didn't like each other very much so they didn't speak to each other so it was just like you know a bit um, so now it's you know so much better immediately in 2004 it was so much better age you know, John Marshall and Hugh Hopper who didn't have a lot of time for each other back in the day. Go on great, you know, and, and uh, we're happy, ha quite happy to be together, you know. Yeah. Uh, that's an age thing. And so right from 2004, 2005 onwards, it's been a good vibe, you know, really good, really good. <laughs>